not an understatement. There is a lot going on in the markets right now. Miles, I know you and I have been fixated on this uh, day two of Coinbase trading and, of course, bank earnings, but a pretty big earnings report and an important one out of Taiwan Semiconductor this morning. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. They're talking about uh, the chip shortage could slip into 2022. It's interesting. I, I kind of, given the conversations that we've had with folks in the last few weeks, I thought that was already table stakes. I thought everyone thought that we were going to have a chip shortage for 18 more months. And my math puts 18 months uh, into 2022. But it's also interesting to see the stock selling off on that, right? The read through. And Sazi, we have talked about this with um, individual investors. We've talked about it with strategists, sector experts, uh, pretty much anybody you can name. Everyone knows there's a chip shortage and everyone knows the bull case for some of these names that we have up on the screen. And if you look at where these stocks are relative to their 52-week high. You know, Intel's only off 5%. Micron is off only 7%. NVIDIA is basically at a, a new high. The Philly Semiconductor Index is only down about 2%. And so, you know, Sazi, I'm a little bit surprised just to see the market continue to, I mean, I guess the market's always going to trade on new information, but uh, I mean, there have rarely been over the last decade as few um, baked in, well-defined consensus cases as there's a chip shortage, the prices are going up, there's going to be more investment, um, you know, everybody in the pool, basically. Yeah, and I think the read through here, at least uh, at least to me, Miles, or one of them, is, is you're probably looking at some pretty strong quarters out of the computer makers, like a Dell uh, and HP, because no, notebook demand, desktop demand is starting to come back a little bit. The next shoe to drop here in that space, at least, is enterprise demand. As we start to go back to the office, there's a lot of antiquated uh, equipment in offices. And when many of us have not been in there for over a year, that stuff is going to have to be upgraded. So you can see a next level uh, of demand within the chip space. Certainly autos have to get their chips so they can start making some, some trucks uh, at the likes of Ford and General Motors. But the next area of focus here is on enterprise demand. Uh, those big servers, those big mainframe computers, they use a lot of chips and they're going to need them. Yeah, Saz, it's funny you mentioned Dell. Um, stock is hired today for a, an unrelated transaction, the spinoff of its stake in VMware and the special dividend. Uh, a, a truly, truly great financial engineering story uh, for, for the business school books over at, at Dell and VMware and what's happened in the last decade. But uh, let's pivot away from what's happening in the tech space to your favorite area of the market. We'll call it your second favorite, because Sazi, I know you love fast food the most. Second favorite area of the market is retail. American Eagle out last night uh, with a big, big guidance um, outlook here. Stock is up 4%. And it's, I mean, Sazi, the, the apparel trade has been just a fascinating one to track over the last six months. The performance in these stocks and the bullishness that we're seeing from executive teams around the future, kind of this reopening boom of people buying new clothes. American Eagle certainly at the center of that. Yeah, this was, uh, I would say, an unsurprising release, Miles, uh, in the sense that if you track Google mobility data over the past month, You've seen a lot of folks back out there at department stores, at, back out there at physical retailers as, as they have reopened. They have taken their stimulus checks. They're out there buying apparel. They're out there buying foot, uh, footwear. You know, we, myself and Reggie Wade, talked to Foot Locker's uh, CEO, Dick Johnson, a couple of weeks ago. He is seeing strength in footwear in large part because of stimulus checks. And we saw this uh, now playing out in American Eagle Outfitters. came out last night, pre-announced results. Said first quarter revenue is on track to reach over $1 billion. And here's, here's the kicker. That'd be a mid-teens, mid-teens percentage increase compared to pre-COVID-19 first quarter levels. So uh, that is a, that's a pretty large increase. Also worth noting here, they're not selling discounted items. Inventories and retail remain very, very low. They're selling full price items. And they know in here they're having strong margins. And as a result, Miles, you're seeing a lot of analysts come out here uh, very bullish on the stock this morning. Yeah, that's the kind of guidance we'd like to see. Comparing it to 2019, now we're getting a real comp because, uh, as we've as we mentioned, those 2020 numbers, uh, they're going to look a little bit goofy uh, all across the board. So, uh, again, American Eagle stock, that's on the move here. Another name we've talked about has been Abercrombie & Fitch. That stock is up 3% in sympathy with this. And when I look at both of these names, Sazi, not only are the stocks, uh, you know, have, have more than doubled in, in most cases from the lows last March, Go back over the last five years. Remember, these were the center of the death of the mall story. They're now at, at five-year highs, uh, both of those names, Abercrombie and American Eagle. And I think, um, you know, really interesting long-term stories. 
Yeah, uh, it makes sense to me, Miles. You're seeing a really a massive upgrading in people's closets as they go back out there to work or they go back out there for a drink. That is happening. We also heard that from Levi CFO, Harmeet Singh, too, on their earnings. People are back out there buying jeans and, what he said, balloon jeans. But we'll leave it on that.